It is a badge of honor to be able to do a lookup, or if you're more fancy, index and match in Excel. That's partly because they're so useful and partly because they're often really hard to set up. So when you learn how easy it is to set up these functions in Airtable, you might be a little shocked. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do lookups, but I'm also gonna show you the Airtable version of sum if, average if, et cetera, because if you think about it, they're all very similar. Using VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, or INDEX and MATCH in Excel finds the first cell that matches your specific criteria. Using SUM IF finds all of the matches for a given criteria and then aggregates them by adding them all together. In Airtable, we have two functions which have similar functionality to those. Lookups are generally used for times when you expect one matching cell, although they do pull in multiple matches if they find it. Rollups are used when you're expecting multiple matches and you might want to do something with those matches, like add them up, average them, or just string them all together in a specific format. I'm Julian, and I run a business that empowers you to get the most out of Airtable. You can download a free template version of this project in the video description below. And if you're interested in getting more personalized help, you can learn more about my services there as well. So hopping into our example Airtable base, this is a database that tracks the merch sales for the New York Yankees. So I've got three tables. One is a table for the sales team. So it lists all the, the members of the sales team. Then I've got a list of the products that we're selling. And lastly, I have a list of all the sales we've made. And the first difference that I wanna highlight between how Excel handles lookups and how Airtable does is that whereas Excel is pointing at coordinates every time and, and you every time you build the function, you tell it which coordinates to look at, Airtable actually understands the relationships between these different products and then does the lookup based on the relationship. And so the first thing we need to do as part of this process is to establish what that relationship is. So in this case, every sale has a product and a salesperson. And right now, these are just text fields that show the product and the salesperson. But because we've entered these in for our company, these have matches to uh, exact. So the salesperson has exact matches to our team here and then the products are exact matches to the products here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do to establish those relationships is I'm gonna go ahead and edit this product field and then change the field type from single line text to link to another record. And then I'm gonna to link to the products table. Now it's giving me the option to allow linking to multiple records in this case, I don't want to do that because I'm only going to ever have one product per line, per sales line here. So I'll go ahead and confirm the change. Skip adding lookup fields now because this would do it automatically for us and we're going to do it ourselves here. And then for the salesperson, we're going to do the same thing. So I'll go ahead and edit the field, change to a linked record type and then pick the team table. And then same thing, I'm only gonna ever have for each sale, one salesperson associated with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and untoggle this. Click save, confirm change. And we'll skip the lookups. So now we can see that these uh, have these little blue bubbles, which means that they are linked to another table. And if I go into the team table, I can now actually see all of the sales listed for each person. And so just right off the bat, we have way more information than we would in Excel. Um, and then in the products table, same thing, we've got a list of all the sales for each product. So since we're in the sales table, the first lookup I wanna do is gonna be in here. And we've got the salesperson for, for each sale but we might want to get the salesperson's phone number in case we have a question about a specific sale. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the end and look up their phone number. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus button here to add a new field, and we'll call this salesperson phone number. And then for the field type, I'm gonna choose the lookup field type 
And the first thing it asks me is which table do I want to look up this information from? So I'm gonna pick the salesperson table and then it's gonna ask me which field do I wanna look up? And in this case, I want the phone number. So if I go ahead and click create field, now I have the phone number for each corresponding salesperson that was associated with that sale. Pretty easy, right? Now, before I mentioned that lookups are generally used for times when you're expecting only one value. And the reason why I said that is because a lookup is gonna find all of the qualified matches for that specific relationship. So in this case, because we've specified that we're only gonna ever have one salesperson associated with uh, a sale, then you only have one phone number here. But let's say that I actually changed this and there were multiple salespeople. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit the field, allow linking to multiple records, save. And then I'm gonna add a second salesperson to this sale. If I scroll over to the right here, I can now see that both of their phone numbers have been pulled in. And maybe there's a case that I wanna do this, but the rollup field type, which is the type we're gonna to get to next, also comes with different options of how we can aggregate those uh, multiple values that come in by listing them in specific formats, or in the case of numbers, like sales numbers to add them up, et cetera. And so typically I use rollups when I'm gonna get multiple values, but you certainly can use a lookup. And there are a couple other reasons why I will use a lookup over a rollup, even if there might be multiple values. So one is that lookups can pull in more special field types that rollups can't. For example, I can pull in pictures. So in this case, we have a product that's specified for each sale. And on the products table, I have a picture of each product. So if I go back to my sales table here and I wanna look up the product picture, I can go ahead and let's call this product picture. This is going to be a lookup. And so I will choose the product table to look up. And then I'm gonna choose the product picture. And when I click save, then I get all of the product pictures that are associated with each product. Now, before we move on to rollups, I have a couple more things I wanna tell you about a lookup. So even though I told you before that lookups will pull in all of the matches, we do have an option to limit the number of matches that it shows. So if I toggle this on, uh, I can actually limit to the last and give it a specific number. So if I leave it at the last one, and click save, then it's only gonna show me one number, even though I know that this one actually had multiple matches. So in this case, yeah, maybe you'd want that because you just want one easy phone number and both people are aware of the sale, so you can just get their one phone number. Now, opening this back up again, we also have this other option, which is only include linked records from the team table that meet certain conditions. So just to keep this simple, I'm gonna untoggle the, the limit number of items shown option. And I'm gonna to toggle this one on. And in this case, I'm gonna say where the sales role of the salesperson associated with this sale is sales associate. So maybe for some reason, I only wanna be able to uh, call sales associates, the other people I don't need to check on. And so I just wanna pull those in. So if I go ahead and click save here, then you can see that it's only pulling in phone numbers for those specific sales where a sales associate was associated with that sale. Lookups can also pull in single select options like these here. And so for example, if we wanna see this, the role of that salesperson, we could go ahead and make sales role and then do a look up of the salesperson and their role. And if I create that, then I get this nice result in full color. All right, moving on to rollups. I am gonna do most of my rollups in the 
team table here because what I'm interested in is really like, what are the stats for each of these salespeople, right? What are their total sales? Maybe what are their average sales? Maybe what was the most recent sale they made? And so now that I'm in this table, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new field here. And the first thing, let's, let's just add up the total sales for each person. So I'm gonna go ahead and say total sales. And now I am going to create a roll up field type. So this roll up is going to look at the sales table and it already, it already uh, filled that out for me because sales is the only other table that the team table is linked to. And then I can choose the total amount. And in a roll up, we have this added box down here where we can aggregate the data in, in different ways. So in this case, it's already guessed that I wanna sum the values and that's exactly what I wanna do. But for a second, I'm gonna get rid of that because this word here, values, is the return. So like if I were to create this field right now, this would basically do the same thing as what the lookup does and just pull in all the matches and list them separated by commas together. The aggregation is always done with that word values. So if I go ahead and, and create sum, write sum back here and then put values in the parentheses and create field, then I get a sum of the total sales per person. Maybe we'll even sort them by total sales so that we can see that Tom Home Run Thompson is in fact our best salesperson at the moment. And just to demonstrate to you that this is all live data, if I go back into our sales here and let's say that we had a, a new sale, so we've got a sale of autographed jerseys by Linda Fastpitch Lee and let's say they're all one size and she sold a hundred jerseys. So this is a big, big order. Now that we have this entered in, if I go back into the team here, I can see that Linda is in fact now by far our best salesperson. Now we don't just have to add up the sales. Let's say we wanted to see the average value of a sale for each person. I can go ahead and this one that's going to be average sale price. This is going to be a roll up again. And then we're going to choose the total amount again. But instead of summing the values, we're going to average the values. And if I go ahead and create the field, there's our average. And because Linda made that one incredible sale, she's still well on top with the average sale price. Now, because rollups can look at numbers, but also dates and text, we can pull in other useful information, such as uh, the date of the most recent sale for each person. So let's go in here and let's call this most recent sale. This is gonna be a rollup. And we are gonna look at the date of sale for each sale in that other table. And in this case, it's guessed that I want to use array unique values, which would mean that it's only going to show unique values. So let's say someone made a bunch of sales in one day and then one sale on the following day, it's just going to show those two dates. It's not going to show a bunch of representations of that first date, which had a bunch of sales. But in this case, we want to use the max function. The max function is going to take the highest, or in the case of a date, the most recent date value that it finds. So if I go ahead and create the field, now I can see the most recent date that each person made a sale. And lastly, I want to show you how we can aggregate text in different ways. So for example, maybe I want to put some reporting into an email, and I wanna just have a list of all the sales that each person has made, but I don't want them separated by commas because that's just gonna be hard to look at. I would rather see each sale listed line by line. So in order to do that, let's go and say list of all sales. 
hit a roll up. And then here we'll choose the sale ID, which is that main first column where we've tracked a bunch of information about the sale. And then for the formula, we're going to use the array join function. So the array join function takes the values and then we also specify the separator. So in this case, if we use the semicolon here, they'd all be separated by a semicolon. But what I want is for them to be separated by a line. And so I can use this backslash n to do that. So if I go ahead and create this field and then expand one of these, I can see all of the sales that this person made separated by each line. Now, it's also worth mentioning that we can, just like with the lookups, we can only include records from the sales table that meet certain conditions. So if I wanted to only list all of the sales where the product was the limited edition baseball, I can go ahead and do that. List of all limited baseball sales, click save. And now we can see that Mike and Jessica haven't sold any, but Linda and Tom have both sold those. And so we've got a list of the sales that they've made for those items. So we just learned how to replace the most commonly used Excel functions in Airtable with lookup and rollup field types. We also learned how to take advantage of extra features in Airtable like looking up attachment field types and finding the most recent date out of qualified matches. Now that you have these aggregation formulas down and you're going to have lots of interesting stats to show, I recommend learning how to present them in dashboards and other interesting formats using Airtable interfaces. To learn more about building interfaces, this video is a great place to start. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.